بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبشرح صدري وسر أمري وأقل تام اللسان يفقه قولي الحمد لله, الحمد لله الذي قال في كتابه قد أفلح من تزكى وصلاة وسلاما على ما قال ألا وهي القلب سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم على آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله it's great to be back with everybody here الحمد لله and just a recap of what we went over uh, the last few weeks inshallah so we started this book of uh, Itmam al-Diraya of Sayyidina Imam al-Siyuti rahimahullah and we noted uh, in the beginning he talks about those nine ideas that you should have right that are really going to set help you set the course for what's coming in the text and then in the second part of the book, and that's what we talked about last week, he talks about three foundations, li murid al-akhira. What are the three usul li man arada al-akhira? What are the three foundations of, of the person whose life is lived for for the hereafter? Wa man arada al-akhira wa sa'alaha sa'yaha wa hu mu'min. Fa'ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura. Sa'yuhum mashkura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever wants the akhirah and works hard for it like and works incredibly hard for it then and this is really nice in arabic sa'yuhu uh, mashkura you lose something here in english and this is something that our brother fadl Suleiman, in his new translation of the ten qiraat he's, he's he's kept is the true usage of the arabic even if it's somewhat confusing in english so it says the sa'yuhu mashkura means his struggle was already was already blessed, was already rewarded. Not rewarded in the hereafter, but already rewarded. In the sense of like, don't doubt that the hard work you're putting in now isn't going to be rewarded. So Allah phrases the reward that you'll get in the past tense. It's kind of like in English when you say, hey man, can you do this for me? And I'm like, consider it done. It's that feeling. So the form maf'ul, mashkura, like it's done. It's already done. Don't worry about all the struggle that you're going through right now for the hereafter. It's already done. Your reward is already there. Subhanallah. MashaAllah. And 70% of the Quran, the time the Quran refers to the hereafter in the past tense. As if to say, it's already done. So the Shaykh, he gave us three foundations, right? For for living uh, a life of a person who is 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 moving beyond just the hereafter. Right, just the hereafter. Uh, the first one that he mentioned, uh, Rahmatullah Ta'ala alayhi, is that to know that all harm and benefit is from Allah. Number two is to know that Anta Abdul Marzuk, that you and I are servants and our provisions have already, again, that form our provisions are taken care of. You don't have to worry about it, it's been handled for you. And the third, and this is very beautiful, Anna Dunya Za'ilatun Faniyatun. That this temporary life is on its way out the door and eventually it's going to cease and the hereafter is approaching and it's going to last forever. And that's where we stopped insha'Allah and today we're going to pick up on the 11th part of the text and he says And he's going to now start to talk about what are the qualities of someone who's working to be a good believer. What are the qualities of someone who, who, who tries, right? And, and the language he uses is very delicate. We'll talk about that a little bit, inshallah, in a minute. But what we're talking about now is, who is truly the believer? He says, He said that the true believer is the one who has completed the branches of faith. The branches of faith. Imam Asiyuti ties a true believer to the branches of faith. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned those branches. In a sound hadith, he said, Al-Iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'bah. That Iman is 70 or more branches. Another narration says 60 or more branches. There's no contradiction here. We go with the highest, right? So 70 or more. فَأَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهِ لَلَّهِ وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَىٰ عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ The Prophet said that 
faith is around 70 or more branches and the the greatest form of faith the most virtuous form of faith is to say la ilaha illallah so i said nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said afdalu ma qultu ana wa nabiyun min qabri la ilaha illallah the best thing that was ever i ever said and the prophets before me ever said is la ilaha illallah and the lowest branch is to remove an obstruction from the road and then he said, and Haya is a branch of faith also. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This hadith is, is extremely important and we're going to talk about it in a second because it brings the three components of faith together. Knowledge, faith in the heart, and practice. Conviction, intellectual conviction, affirmation in the heart and then practice through speech and deeds but before we do that let's unpack a few things about faith because we now live as i mentioned before in an era where the individual has basically been turned into the altar of this area people no longer go to church they netflix binge people go no longer to church they leisure has become now a form of ibad for people subhanallah there was an article many, many years ago in Life magazine called The Problem of Leisure. Like leisure is becoming now like a religion. Uh, and with that, there is this kind of amplification of the I. You know, everybody thinks they're special. Everybody's opinion is special. And everybody's like easily offended by things which may even be that they hold that are illogical. And with that, is this trickle down into religion where people no longer respect um, a specialist like the ulama scholars people who know and faith now especially within contemporary capitalism faith is about like how you feel i feel like this so it must be right where it's islam not hislam right it's very different so there's a few important points that I want to make about faith from the tradition of Ahlul Sunnah, this orthodox tradition, the tradition of Ahlul Sunnah that are crucial. The first is that faith is learned. Faith is learned. Jundub ibn Abdullah he said, "Fata'allamna al-imana qabla al-Qur'ani, thumma ta'allamna al-Qur'ana fazdadna bihi imanan." وَإِنَّكُمَ الْيَوْمَ تَعْلَمُونَ الْقُرْآنَ قَبَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Jundub ibn Abdillahi radiallahu ibn Abdillahi radiallahu anhu he said that we, the Sahaba, we learned faith before the Qur'an and then talking to his students he said and he said because of that our, our faith increased but now you and talking to his students you learn Qur'an before Iman what would you say to this generation? فَتَعَلَّمْتُمْ يَعْنِي مَا تَظُنُّ فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ قَبَلَ الْإِيمَانِ like you, you've learned what you think is how you feel, what's in your heart, before you learn Quran, before you learn the Iman. Abdullah ibn Umar noted also that the prophetic way was to learn first, the importance of learning, the centrality of learning. He said, لَقَدْ عِشْنَا بُرْحَةً مِنْ دَهْرِنَا Burha or barha means like a small amount of time from our era. وَأَحْدُنَا يَأْتِ الْإِيمَانَ قَبَلَ Quran." And a person would have faith before they had a relationship with the Quran in our Islamic studies programs and private schools. Do we just focus on, you know, memorization before Iman? Do we have a class on Iman? In high school, do we have a class on Iman? Not just Aqidah, Iman. So he says, we lived for a considerable amount of time and before one of us would learn faith he, before one of us would learn faith before the Quran, meaning the rulings in the Quran, not the faith in the Quran. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal a chapter to the Prophet and we would learn what is permissible and is impermissible, its orders and its admonishments, where it demanded a person stop and reflect. He said, like how you learn the Quran from us today. However, these days I've noticed, Abdullah ibn Umar says, I've noticed some people who begin with the Quran before faith. He will read everything between Fatiha and the entire Quran without knowing what it commands. Its admonishments and where he should stop and how he should have 
or she should have a relationship with the Quran. So they may recite the Quran without a relationship. So Iman leads to a relationship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Ahzab that, you know, they they get goosebumps when the Quran is recited physically. In Surah Al Anfal, Wajadat Qulubuhum, when the Quran is recited, you, you, their heart is moved. So the Sahaba didn't just learn the Quran, they learned Iman and then they learn the Quran. SubhanAllah. The second component of Iman that we talked about are actions. And unlike learning, which is a constant, and which always has to be there in the backdrop of a Muslim's life, the idea that learning is for children, learning religion is for children, is really an immense post-colonial hangover. Aisha radiallahu anha noted this when she said the only thing Allah revealed at the beginning of Islam was a few chapters from the Mufassal, which is Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th chapter to the end of the Quran, that contained the details of Iman. When Abdullah bin Umar said, Ta'alamna al-Imana qabla al-Quran, he meant Ta'alamna Imaniyat fil Quran, qabla Ta'alamna ahkam fil Quran, Imaniyat fil Quran, qabla and Ta'alamna al ahkam fil Quran. What he meant is we learned Iman in the Quran and then later on rulings came. So here Sayyidah Aisha is saying the only thing that Allah revealed in the very beginning was Al Mufassal. Mufassal means the detailed chapters, they have a lot of details about Iman. Surah Al-Hujarat to Surah Al-Nas that contained the details of heaven and hell and once people were strong in their Islam verses containing the permissible and the forbidden were sent if she says subhanallah walaw nuzila awwal shay la tashrabu al-khamra wala you know if the first thing that was sent was don't drink and don't fornicate she says, Wallahi, we'd have never been able to stop. Like without Iman in the commands, we would have never been able to fulfill the commands. So the, what she's saying is we learned theoretical, intellectual concepts about Allah, and then we learn practice over time, over time. Oftentimes we find Islamic schools and teachers, it's the opposite. They teach people practice and parents, and particularly parents. They teach practice before faith. Here also is another very beautiful statement of Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu on the idea of emergent religiosity, emergent religious practice coupled with consistent iman. He said, Inna Allah ba'atha nabiyyahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi shahadati la ilaha illallah falamma sadaqa bihi al-mu'minun zadahum salata falamma sadaqu biha zadahum zakata falamma sadaqu biha zadahum siyama falamma sadaqu bihi zadahum al-hajj فَلَمَّا صَدَقُوا بِهِ زَادَهُمُ الْجِهَادِ ثُمَّ أَكْمَلَهُمْ أَكْمَلَ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ فَقَالَ تَعَالَى أَلْيَمَّكْ مَا تُرَكُوا دِينَكُمْ Look at this narration. Allah SWT sent the Prophet with the testimony, there is no God except Allah. And when people believe that, He increased them by commanding them to pray. And when people believed it, He ordered them to pay zakat. When people believed that, He commanded them to fast. And when people believed that, He commanded them to observe hajj. And when they believed in that, he commanded them to fight for justice. And then he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, completed and perfected Islam. Notice if you speak Arabic, he doesn't say, thumma amilu biha, aw bihi. He said, thumma sadaqu. Meaning that internally and externally, they affirmed. Sadaqu means to affirm internally and externally. So they completely affirmed these things, and then the next thing would come, and the next thing would come, and the next thing would come. The other point about faith, and this is what I mentioned earlier, is that faith isn't a feeling or a whim. Allah says, "What Don't follow their desires; it will take you away from the truth. And when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, He said, "Ma yantiqo anil hawa in huwa illa wahyuyuha." The Prophet doesn't speak from his whims. What he speaks has been revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Araita man ittakhada hawahu ilah. Have you seen the ilah hawa? Have you seen the person who takes their whims and their feelings as their God? This is this era, subhanAllah. Look at what the great scholar Ibn Abu Bakr ibn al Arabi, the great Maliki jurist from the Maghrib, he said, Inna had al ilma al mukallaf. لا يحصل ضرورة ولا إلهاما. This is a very important statement. 
He's saying that the obligatory knowledge of faith is not something achieved by necessity, meaning like you just know. And sometimes people mistake the idea of fitra. Oh, fitra means people are automatically born to know faith perfectly. No, fitra is about potential that has to be utilized, not an outcome that is someone's nature. This is a mistake Muslims make a lot. So he says, In the ilm al mukallaf la yahsuru dururatan wala ilhaman. So it's not something that you can learn naturally, nor is it something that, you know, is going to come to you by ilham, by inspiration. Wala yasihu taqlidu fi. That's a different discussion. It's not allowed to blindly follow someone. Oh, they believe in Allah, so I believe in Allah. No, you have to learn for yourself. وَلَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْخَيْرَ طَبِيقًا إِلَيْهِ And he says, and it is not possible, right, that the only that you can just achieve this, right, without making any effort. وَإِنَّمَا تَرِيقُ إِلَيْهِ النَّظُرُ But the way that this knowledge is learned is by studying and learning. رضي الله عنه and that's powerful because in today's age, folks tend to trust themselves way too much. This virus has exposed the myth of self-reliance. Completely shattered the myth of self-reliance. And an outcome of this age is this idea that everybody's right, I have my own opinion, you know, I'm correct. Even if it goes against specialists or the advice of specialists or the direction of scholars. In fact, this is an era now where not only religious scholars, but scholars in all fields are seen as great as like suspect. An outcome of an age that has set a man, set man as the ultimate being, the sole agent on earth. The outcome is an inflated sense of opinion and experiences. And the Prophet he warned of this of this when he said, Bal Tamaru bil Ma'rufi wa Tanahu Anil Munkari Hatta Ida Raita Shuhan Muta'a. The Prophet said, You must call to good and forbid the evil until you people see people obeying their stinginess. وَهَوَى مُتَّبَعَةً And people following their desires. وَالدُّنْيَا مُؤَثَّرَةً And the dunya preferred over everything else. وَإِعْجَابَ كُلِّ ذِي رَأْيٍ بِرَأْيِ And you notice that everybody thinks their opinion is special. That's this time. صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, at that time, focus on yourself and avoid the masses because without a doubt, days are coming which resilience during them will be like holding on to hot iron. At that time, a devotee to Allah, his or her good deeds will equal that of 50 men who act similar to him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sources of learning faith also, Al-Qadi, he mentions, وُجُوبُ الْمَعْرِفَ وَالنَّذْرَ عَلَى الْوَجْءِ الَّذِي يَرَتَبْنَاهَا عُلِمَا شَرْعًا لَا أَقْلًا He said that learning faith, first and foremost, is founded in, in the Sharia, not strictly from the intellect. The intellect can complement the Sharia if it aligns with the Sharia. But the intellect as a sole source of right and wrong when it comes to faith is something that Islam does not agree with. And he said, and that's how every obligation is. And what's good and what's evil, what's forbidden, and what's permissible. وَوَطَرِيقُ ذَلِكْ كُلُّهُ وَجُمْلَةُ الْأَحْكَامِ الشَّرْعِ فَلَا حُكْمَ يَتَعْلَقُ بِهِ تَكْلِفْ إِلَى لَهُ And that the only way that you can arrive to this, of course, is with the Sharia. رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى What that means is that the sources for faith that we're going to talk about now and practice are the Qur'an and Sunnah as understood by the ulama. Because without the ulama, we have chaos and confusion. You know, one time there was this person he was writing against ISIS, was upset about ISIS, which is understandable. And then at the same time, he was saying in the name of like progressive values, we don't need ulama, we don't need scholars. And Mark Manley, Imam Mark Manley responded to him and said, well, then you're the same as ISIS. This is the same argument as ISIS. We don't need ulama, we don't need scholars, we don't need anyone to guide us. On the opposite end, you find between irrational conservatism and irresponsible liberalism, ulama. That doesn't mean all the ulama are right. doesn't mean what all the scholars say you have to accept. No, you should think with one eye open, of course. You should be critical and constructively critical. But the ulama act as a centering agent in our religion. Allah says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of remembrance if you don't know the ulama. As Ibn Abbas, he said, أَهْلُ ذِكْرُ أَهْلُ قُرْآنَ People of dhikr are the people of the Qur'an. 
There are some other important things we take from what Imam Asiyuti said, Rahimahullah, and that is that faith increases and decreases. And that's why he says, Kamulat fihi shu'ab al iman. MashaAllah. You know, he didn't say that a perfect a person a person who is wal mu'minu haqqan that the true believer is one who has iman perfectly. And that's a mistake sometimes that's lost in translation. He said, but the attempt to complete. And this, this touches on a profound idea that has impacted Islam uh, in this era, or Muslims in particular, in Muslim thought, is that, you know, faith has to be done perfectly. But that's impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ People are made weak. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنْكُمْ Allah wants to make things easy for you because you can't handle it. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ People are made weak. The Prophet said, كُلُّ بَنِي أَدَمْ خَطَّى Everybody makes mistakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَا يُكَلِفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسَعَى Allah will not burden people more than they can handle. And Allah says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ O oh, believers, repent. If the believers were perfect, Allah would not ask them, command them to repent. But repentance is obviously the outcome of mistakes. But still, he called them believers. In fact, look in Surat Al-Buruj. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا Indeed, those who kill believing men and women and don't repent. Meaning if they do repent, what's called mafhum mukhalifa, they'll be forgiven inshallah if their repentance is, is truthful. Allah says in Surah At-Tawbah, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ That if Abu Sufyan and his wife and those with them in Mecca repent to Allah and establish prayer and pay zakah, they are your brothers and sisters in religion. So subhanAllah, uh, the point is in the context of the believer, Allah mentions repentance. In the concept of major sins, Allah mentions repentance as a way to reform and become a better person. If we were perfect believers, there would be no Baba Tawbah. There would be no need for Tawbah. And this idea of perfection leads us to Khawarijism, where people begin to justify abusing Muslims who may struggle with sin, uh, mistreating people because they, they may have real issues in their life that they struggle with, or just because they're weak. That's why Imam al tahawi in his Aqeedah, he said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ الرَّحْمَانِ All of the believers, they are the friends of Allah. All of them, subhanAllah. He said, of course, the best of those are those who act and obey the limits found in the Qur'an. So it's very important that we don't frame Iman as this ideological attempt at perfection. Iman is about making an effort, a sincere effort. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who work hard to draw near to us, we guide them to different ways, to multiple ways of guidance, alhamdulillah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith read by Imam Muslim and Sayyidina Imam Malik in the Muatta, when he said, إِنَّ الدِّينَ يُسْرُ The religion is ease. وَلَنْ يُشَدْ أَحَدٌ هَذَا الدِّينَ إِلَّا غَلَابَةٌ And nobody will make this religion hard except it will defeat him. فَسَدِّدُ وَقَارِبُ So he said, سَدِّدْ وَقَارِبْ سَدِّدْ actually means if you shot an arrow at a target. How many of us would actually hit the target or the center of the target? Most of us wouldn't. So he's not saying be perfect. He's saying do your best. وَقَارِبُ And seek to be close to Allah. So Islam doesn't look for perfection. Islam looks for sincere effort subhanallah illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat so that touches on this important point because sometimes when we tell young people and our children or we tell even grown adults like you know you're not a perfect believer this is a concept that's rooted in like a neo-hellenistic age islam doesn't look for perfection islam looks for hard work that is done inshallah with, with an attempt to hit the target right so that means that faith is going to increase and decrease it has to say the imam Suyuti by using the word complete instead of perfects touches on an important point it is impossible to be perfect effort is what islam demands not perfection for that reason scholars coined the phrase al iman yazid wa yanqus 
Sayyidina Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, Fiqhu fi Torah Jumihi. They say that the Fiqh of Bukhari is in his chapter headings. Radiyallahu anhu. And in the beginning it has Al-Iman Yazid wa Yanqus. Faith increases and decreases. Imam al-Laqani in his great book Jawaharat al-Tawheed, which we studied in Al-Azhar, he said, وَرُجِّحَتْ زِيَادَةُ الْإِيمَانِ بِمَا يَزِيلُ طَاعَةُ الْإِنسَانِ وَنَقْصُهُ بِنَقْصِهِ وَقِيلَ لَا لَا خَلْفَ كَذَا قَدْ نُقِيلَ In this poem, mashallah, which I teach at my school in Swiss uh, to the fourth year students, وَرُجِّحَتْ زِيَادَةُ الْإِيمَانِ بِمَا يَزِيلُ طَاعَةُ الْإِنسَانِ وَنَقْصُهُ بِنَقْصِهِ وَقِيلَ لَا لَا خَلْفَ كَذَا قَدْ نُقِيلَ this is called Bahar al Rajas for those of you who like Arabic. The form of the poem, the style of the poem. We have 13 ways to read poetry. This one is called Rajas a Himar al Sha'ara. He says in his poem, the approved opinion, meaning the dominant or the, 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 the most widely held opinion, which is given the correct, uh, if you will, designation, is that Iman increases with a person's obedience. People ask, how do I increase my Iman? Do you pray Fajr? It's a very simple question. How do I increase my Iman? How do you treat your spouse? Why is my Iman low? When was the last time you prayed Nafil? Made Dua, made Sadaqah. Well, there's the answer. Bima yazid ta'atul insani. Shaykh, he says that Iman increases by ta'ah. Obedience to Allah. Wa naqsuhu bi naqsiha wa qila la. And then the deficiency in Iman is because my obedience to Allah is deficient. Radiallahu anhu. This poem is very important. Jawhar al-Tawheed. One more time. Urujjihat ziyadatul imani bima yaziru ta'atul insani wa naqsuhu bi naqsihi wa qila la la khalfa kada qad nuqila. MashaAllah. So now, the rest of the book. And we're going to stop now. And this we only covered about like, I think, uh, 5% of the book actually, subhanAllah. With my explanation, alhamdulillah. The rest of the book is dedicated to the branches of Iman. MashaAllah. Every chapter is dedicated to the branches of Iman. And that's how we live practical faith. Just learn the branches of Iman. You know, subhanAllah, why do people like weird things? You know why people like weird things? Because they're selfish and they're narcissistic. So I want to have an ah moment. I want to meet the guru on a mountain. You know, that's very selfish. But real faith is just to learn faith. Whether it's like simple, whether it's not simple, whether it has like, you know, thousands of filters, whether it agrees with me or not, doesn't matter. Remember Burger King, have it your way. Now people, they want iman their way. La hawla wa la billah. And that selfishness gets them in trouble. I remember when I lived in one Muslim country, mashallah, there was a brother who, subhanAllah, he decided to go live in what's called the the Muqattam, the Mu'attam, yani, and he decided to go live in a cave in the Mu'attam, and he wanted to live with one sheikh, and that sheikh was telling him to go live in the Turba, in the graveyard, and to spend the night in the graveyard, and there he will find Allah. And he did it, subhanAllah, this brother's from America, and then... You know, all he could talk about was his personal experience. Like, it was so amazing. You know, people from Egypt, you know, the Torba is where you go to get robbed, you know. So, he did all that to himself. And then later on in life, he realized, like, he actually had psychologically kind of, like, damaged himself. Like, why did you have to do that? I remember once I was in a masjid and a brother came to me. He was a very strange person, subhanAllah. May Allah protect us all. And he was telling me, you know, have you ever lived in a cave? I said, no. He said, yeah, man, you should go live in a cave. I lived in a cave now for the last 20 days so I can find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can find Allah in the Quran, Surah Al-Kaf. Right? If you want to live in a cave, read Surah Al-Kaf. But you have to be careful. If you find yourself moving towards the spooky occult, a sheikh is telling you things that sound illogical, but it's like it's different, it's cool. Maybe that's narcissism. Prophet said, Simplicity, al badala tu min al iman. Simplicity is from iman. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the rest of the text, Sayyidina As-Suyuti, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, dedicates to 
the branches of Iman. He says, just work on establishing the, these branches in your life. Don't make it strange. Don't make it complicated. So he says, Rahimullah wa hiya bid'un, bid'u wa sab'una, bid'un wa sab'una sha'bah. That the branches of Iman are 70. There's no need now to go into the differences about the numbers of those things. Hadhar im la yufidu al-amal. To talk about that, it's not going to lead to any type of action. You know, it's always good to focus on knowledge that leads to action. So we say, هذا العلم لا ينفع وجهل لا يضر. Like knowing about this whole debate and 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 the jam in the different hadith and ta'arud and tanaqud and the adilla, it's not going to lead anyone to any type of practice. So then, why talk about it? Look, Subhanallah, when Sayyidina Jibreel he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Mata sa'a?" When is the hour? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he didn't give a long answer because it's not going to lead to action. Then he asked him, "Wama?" What are the amaratuha? What are the signs? Then the Prophet fassara wa fassara wa atnaba. Then the Prophet goes into a long description because that leads to practice. That leads to action. And sometimes even people ask the Prophet Sallallahu theoretical questions and he answers them in a way you feed al amal that directs them to practice practicality, not weird stuff. Mata sa'a ya Rasulullah. When the man asked the Prophet, when is the hour? He said, Ma addatta laha. What did you prepare for? He didn't get into some like, ooh, cool. Turmeric latte, Barnes and Noble, you know, esoteric spirituality. Oh, man. SubhanAllah, I know a brother, he used to sit around and argue with people about these things and would miss Fajr. Yeah, well, what's the purpose, SubhanAllah? But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he avoids this. He says, Ma addatta laha. What did you prepare for? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yas'alunaka anil ahillah. They ask you about the, the moons. Qul hii mawaqeetu lil nasi wal hajj. Use it to keep time and you use it for hajj. Look how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala changes the answer. Changes the answer. Ila ma yufidu al amal. Doesn't get off into some kind of theoretical thing. As one of my teachers said, Islam is too cool for Muslims so they have to like always you know make it cooler subhanallah the branches of faith are around 70 as is related by Sayyidina al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim al-Iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'bah fa'afdaluha qawlu la ilahi lallahu wa adnaha imatatu al-adha'an al-tariqi wa al-haya'u shu'batun min al-Iman Prophet said, faith consists of 70 branches. The most virtuous is to say there is no God but Allah. And the lowest is to remove an obstruction, something that can harm people from the road. And Hayat is a branch of faith also. This hadith, mashallah, does a lot for us in this presentation of Iman. As we now begin to go into the branches of faith, inshallah. And that is that the branches of faith are consisting of three things number one is faith in the heart number two is actions of the limbs and number three is speech if you look at the hadith la ilaha illallah that's speech to remove something from the road that's an action haya in our theology is its locus is the heart so in this one hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam shows the components of iman Faith is different than faith in Islam is different than other traditions. Faith is not just in your heart, right? As say in Christianity. Faith is heart, mind, actions, right? Heart, what you say, which is correlated to your mind and how you act. So you find them all three here. La ilaha illallah, mind and, and tongue. To move something out of the way that's harming people. هذا العمل an action and then حياء is an issue of the heart so all three are there mashallah mashallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expounds on this in Surah Ibrahim the 14th chapter of the Quran where he says subhanahu wa ta'ala after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim alam tara kayfa darab allahu mathalan kalimatan tayyibah kashajaratin tayyibah we should be teaching this verse to our kids and to new Muslims and 
And those of us who are older, if we don't know this verse, we need to punish ourselves because it's a very important verse. Because this verse defines the believer and opens up this relationship with the branches of Iman. Imam al-Tabari, he narrates from Sayyidina ibn Abbas, Karima tayyibah shahadatu Allah la ilaha illallah. That the statement in the verse, have you not noticed how Allah sets forth a parable? A good word. Ibn Abbas says a good word is la ilaha illallah. Which is like a healthy tree. The healthy tree is the believer. Its root is firm. He said here, qalbu mu'min. He's the heart of the believer who says la ilaha illallah. And his branches reached the heavens. He said his branches, A, Al-Amal, Amal Al-Mu'min, are the actions. So mashallah, in one verse, through this parable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps now frame us as this tree. The asl of this tree is the intellect and the heart, both together. And the branches of the tree are our actions. So here we see something unique to Al-Islam. The marriage of ideas, Feelings of the heart, statements, and actions, all of these work in concert to make Iman. All of these are part of what we call Iman. And of course, the ruts of it all is, 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 is the intellect. There's also something beautiful about the statement of the Prophet, the branches of faith. The branches of faith are incredibly important, especially if a person desires to live for the hereafter. It's like a checklist. A faithful person can adopt and practice from one from time to time. Like, go and study. what I, And that's what we're going to learn here, inshallah. And I will continue to teach this class at my school, Swiss. Uh, so if you want to enroll there, mashallah, you can sign up at suhaibweb.com, inshallah. And we're going to continue every week to teach uh, this class, inshallah, live over there, uh, inshallah ta'ala. So, you know, mashallah, I can start. What's the first? What's the second? What's the third? What's the fourth? What's the fifth? What's the sixth? And I can spend my life going through the 70 or 72 branches of faith and mashallah i'm the person who's now attempted to complete not perfect complete those branches Allahu Akbar. that should be part of our high school curriculum the 72 branches of faith should start in junior high and be finished by the time a person graduates and we should give them certificate mashallah you did the 70 branches of faith alhamdulillah mashallah mashallah that's how we can now start to think pedagogically uh, about about how we teach al-Islam. So like a checklist, a faithful person can adopt and practice one from time to time. Hence, he'll work to complete his faith or her faith. For that reason, scholars like Imam al-Bayhaqi, Imam ibn Hibban, and Imam ibn Hajr, they dedicated actual works to this. But more important is the branches of faith touch on physical acts, feelings in the heart, worship, character, and even things like social responsibilities. And they touch every type of act like performing the obligations or avoiding the forbidden here instead of act it should be every type of ruling haram halal makru wajib mandu wa mubah right that's one of the greatest proofs that permissible acts are rewarded by allah because some of the branches of faith are permissible mashallah but with the niyyah, they became rewarded, as we talked about before, uh, in, in the nine foundations of the seeker, in the first or second lesson that we had together. So now you can see how this course, I like to tell people, is a slow roast. This course I teach is a process. It's not an event. I don't like one-off talks. I don't like entertainment. I like education. Information for transformation. Information for transformation. Not information just to feel good. That's that's Joe Osteen. Like you can watch Joe Osteen, get that. But what we want is that old school grandma on the front porch religion that compels us to live a certain way and demands it from us. So again, more important is that the branches of faith touch on physical acts, feelings in the heart, worship, like salah, character, and social responsibilities, like standing up for justice. And they touch every type of ruling, from the obligations, to the forbidden things, to the disliked, to the recommended, to the permissible. Let's talk today and then we'll stop insha'Allah. What's the first branch? The first branch, he says, وَذَارِكَ الْإِيمَانُ بِاللَّهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ Sayyidina as said, 
that is accomplished, this undertaking, and now we're on the journey. This is where the book, everything up until now has been an introduction. Now the journey starts. The first branch, Allahu Akbar, we're going to start the first branch of our Iman. We can make sure that the tree is healthy, the fruit is there. وَذَارِكَ الْإِيمَانُ بِاللَّهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَحُدُوثِ مَا دُونَهُ وَبِمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَالشَّرِّهِ He said this is accomplished, or that, meaning completing Iman, is accomplished first by faith with Allah. His attributes and the temporality of all things besides Him. Huduth. Remember this word. This word is very important in Islamic theology. Huduth. And faith with his angels, with his books, with the last day, and with his decree, the good and the bad. Let's talk about what faith is quickly. The word faith in Arabic comes from a word which means safety, security, and the removal of fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in... Uh, so to Quraysh, وَآمَنَهُمْ uh, Sorry, وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خوف. He Allah secured them from fear. We say in Masr, أَمَنَ الدَّوْلَ فِي الْحَقِيقَ الْعَكْسِ يعني يعني دَمِّرُونَ الدَّوْلَ But أَمَن أَمَن means to be secure. أَمَن Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He's أَمِين The one you can feel secure with. He has الْأَمَانَ Security. The Prophet wasallam. there are more than 13 ahadith that authentically prove that Sayyidina Isa is going to return. That's why Ahlul Sunnah, alhamdulillah, as a majority, they believe in his return. We need to stay away from this kind of side discussions. And the Prophet in that authentic hadith said, when Sayyidina Isa returns, وَتَقَعُ الْأَمَانَةُ فِي الْأَرْضِ That security and safety will occur on the earth. We ask Allah uh, to bless us to see those days. Right, and we should be careful now. People saying coronavirus is the end of times. Listen, there is at least, according to authentic hadith, 75 years time wise of things that haven't even started yet that have to happen before the end of time. People need to stay away from this stuff, man. I have an important podcast you can listen to it called Not So Fast, and I talk about the interpretive tools needed to get into eschatology, right? The science of the hereafter. And he, the Prophet ﷺ, he defined faith as أَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَالْبَعْثِ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ To believe in, with Allah, with His angels, with His books, with His messenger, with the hereafter, with hell and heaven, and to believe with Qada and Qadr wasallam. Scholars of religion debated the different components of faith but settled on three things. Imam al-Asfahani, Raghib al-Asfahani, mashaAllah, and his Mufradat Gharib al-Quran, he said, وَذَارِكَ بِإِجْتِمَعِ ثَلَاثَةِ أَشَاءِ That faith is, it, it happens when three things work in concert. تَحْقِيقُ بِالْقَلْبِ وَإِقْرَارُ بِالْلِسَانِ وَعَمِلُ بِحَسْبِ ذَارِكَ بِالْجَوَارِحِ He said that faith comes together when the heart affirms it, when the speech, when the when the heart believes in it, when the speech affirms it, and then someone's limbs act based on what's in their heart and what they say. Radiallahu anhu. The proof that faith is conviction, feeling, and action is the narration of Abu Umama. Radiallahu anhu. There's many evidences for this. The example I gave of Surah Ibrahim before Ayah 24. مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ وَمَنْعَ لِلَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Who loves for Allah and hates for Allah. Who gives for Allah and holds back for Allah. So loving and hating are emotions. It's part of Iman. Who gives and holds back? That's a physical action. فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Then that person has completed their Iman. صلى الله عليه وسلم this takes us into an important discussion. Maybe you heard me, I said faith with Allah instead of faith in Allah. This is an absolute disaster of translation because it's not iman fila. And anyone that has basically a rudimentary understanding of Arabic, basically starting in seventh grade, they're going to know that the word bab, يَمَعْنَ الْمُجَاوَرَةَ يَعْنِي مَرَدْتُ بِشَيْءٍ I pass by something. Uh, so the word ba, كَمَا قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءَ حَرْفُ بَا تُفِيدُ الْحَرَكَةَ Right, ba means movement. Fajitu bi Amrin, I came with Amr. Imam Ibn Hisham is one of the great Imams, mashallah, 
from our for our ancestors he wrote a poem just dedicated to the meanings of huruf jar of articles of preposition called mughni have you been that book mashallah mashallah allahu akbar and he mentions nine different meanings that ba has like bismillahir rahmanir rahim iqra bismi rabbik fa bi dhulmin min alladhina hadu haramna alayhim tayyibatin uhillat lahum so sometimes ba can be like because of fa bi dhulmin min alladhina because of the jews uh, uh, sin haramna alayhim tayyibatin we made certain things forbidden for them bismillah rahman rahim ba al isti'ana with the help of allah's names iqra bismi rabbik a Read by ba, what's called ba, uh, also ba isti'ana bi'awni la taqra. O Muhammad, recite with the help of Allah. Some ulama said here, for Allah, ikhlas to Allah. But here, subhanallah, al imanun bi la illa ladhi amantu bi lahi. Here the ba means as al Qadi Abu Bakr, the same person we mentioned before. He says in his tafsir ayat al ahkam that the word ba means al musahaba with. So when he says, وَبِلْ آخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ مَعَ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ That changes the whole ball game, Because if you say faith in Allah, it's very boring. So just you have to learn some rules. It's like Sunday school. Faith in Allah is like other religions. But faith with Allah doesn't only mean that I learned. It means I am now living a life as though I am with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though, of course, I'm not physically with Allah. But I live a life as though I'm with the Qur'an, I'm with Sayyid al-Aqwan, with the Prophet I'm with the Malaika, I'm with the books because faith is a choice. So through good times, bad times, I'm with Allah. Through success and failure, I'm with Allah. Through happiness and sadness, health and sickness, corona, no corona, and a ma'Allah. That's the meaning of that. So it doesn't just mean I learn. It means I learn and I make the right choice. Now that expands the idea of Islamic theology to a number of things. It touches on liberation theology. It touches on issues of social justice. But it also touches on issues of personal piety. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the 57th chapter, the fourth verse, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ I'm with you wherever you are. When Sayyidina Harun and Sayyidina Musa say, إِنَّ نَخَافَ We're scared. لَا تَخَافَ إِنِّي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى وَأَرَى Don't be scared, I'm with you. I see and hear everything. لَا تَحْزَنِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِهْ مَعَنَا Don't be scared, Abu Bakr, Allah is with us, as is mentioned in the Qur'an. Allah says, "Aqraba ilaykum min habalil warid." This is how we should be teaching our young people iman. We teach them iman now, like like I hate to say this in some ways, like 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 other religions, where Islam iman is not only about an intellectual conviction and a spiritual passion; it is about living responsibly. So, ba bi ma'na ma'a aman tu ma'Allah, aina ma akunu ana ma'a Rabbi wa huwa ma'i. Wherever I am, I am with Allah, and Allah is with me, with His knowledge, Subhanahu wa Taala. That's why, Subhanallah, we said that harfu ba to fidul ihsan. Now you can understand the hadith to worship Allah as though you what, as though you see Him. How do you see something that you don't know is with you, or you don't feel that you have a relationship with it? So musahaba from the same word as sahaba, dil ba di eh ba musahaba. This ba is called ba al musahaba, meaning with. Jit to be Sharif. I came with Sharif. Amantu Billah. I'm with Allah. Wa inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi sama. So it's a very different type of thing now when we talk about faith with. Now only means the acquisition of principles, knowledge, and learning and understanding. It also means to live righteously. And that touches on the crux of learning in Islam. We don't just learn to learn. We learn information for transformation. Knowledge is translated in action, in righteous works. The other word that he uses, inshallah, as we finish, is huduth. And he says, 
الإيمان بالله وحدوث ما سوى. The word hadith means temporary hadith because when you say it, it has a beginning and an ending. Hadith also means news. هل أتاك حديث موسى because it has a beginning and an ending. So hadith means something. That's why you call accident haditha. It doesn't last long. It comes and goes. It's temporary. It's a temporary. It's an aberration. So huduth is temporality, and this forms the crux of Islamic theology. Imam Asyuti uses important word huduth. Huduth means temporary. Something has a beginning and ending. In other words, everything but Allah. That distinction is important because it laid down the foundation for Allah's existence responds to the absolute stupidity and irrationality and ignorance of atheism and compels a Muslim to live a life of responsibility and righteousness. Sheikh Ahmed Dabdir, and I didn't put here also, we teach his book at Swiss for uh, uh, fourth year and uh, Jawhara the fifth year. Uh, Imam Ahmed Dabdir wrote in Al Kharida. Sheikh Ahmad Dardir is from Dar al Ahmar, Masr. He used to live behind Al Azhar, Rahimahullah. And his house is still there and his masjid is still there, mashallah. 200 years ago, one of the great great Imams. He says, This is the book that we teach in the fifth year at Swiss. You can enroll, you can go to suhaibweb.com, Al Kharida. ثُمَّ أَعْلَمًا بِأَنَّ هَذَا الْعَالَمَ إِمَاسِي وَاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ عَلِيمًا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَقٍ حَادِثٌ مَفْتَقِرٌ لِأَنَّهُ قَمَ بِهِ تَغَيِّرُ حُدُوثُهُ وُجُودُهُ بَعْدَ الْعَدَمْ وَضِدُّهُ هُوَ الْمُسَمَّ بِالْقِدَمْ He said, then you must know that the entire world, Al-Alama, Al-Alamin, right? The word Alam is from a flag, Alam, Alam al Because Al-Alamin is a sign of Allah's existence. Just like the flag is a sign, Judah the sign of the existence of an army. A masi wallahi al ali al alima, al alima. Everything except Allah. Min ghairi shakin hadith. Without a doubt, is hadith. Hadith means something has a beginning, something has. A we say yajibu lillahi taala al qidam wal baqa, al awlawi wal ukhrawi. We believe Allah has no beginning and no ending. Why? Surah Al-Hadith. He's the first and the last. No beginning, no ending. Beyond time, beyond space, beyond the material world. When students, they start to ask me, I don't understand this yet. I, I tell them, listen, close your eyes and imagine a creation of a color, a shape, and a language which we've never seen before. They can't even imagine it. I tell them, you know why you can't imagine it? Because you're matter. Before the laws of, laws of thermodynamics were put into place, scholars in the Muslim world were purporting without knowing it, the laws of thermodynamics. One of them is that matter can neither create itself nor destroy itself. But matter is here. So our belief as Muslims is that matter, a al-huduth, temporality, whoever made this temporary world isn't temporary. There you go. So the word for being temporary is hadith, huduth, that Imam Siyuti mentions. So Sheikh Dardi says, من غير شق Temporary and in need. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established it that it is exists on change. We exist through flux. Then he defines huduth. He says, Temporarily, temporal or something being Temporary means that its existence, it existed, this translation is wrong, it existed after non-existence. Like us, we didn't exist a hundred years ago, nobody even knew who we were. Allah says, We know that it happened. So we are hadith, hadithin. The other component of hudud is that it has an ending and we know we're going to die. Lakin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lam yalid. This is very important in our iman that everything is temporary except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that something is infinite, it's called qidam, has no beginning, no ending. Inshallah, we're going to stop here, uh, but and we'll stop kind of at the first part of this branch of iman. Imanun billah. But there is a lot to cover, inshallah. Uh, in the future, we'll try to come back and continue reading from this text so we can take each branch uh, one by one by one, inshallah.
بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله